Welcome to the Elevate the Vibe podcast, bringing you juicy convos with thought leaders discussing the wild world of parenting. How do you deal with your emotion when you get mad or do things like that? Your breath is the first thing to disappear. So if you're able to get the breath, because the kids go through all kinds of things in school, out of school. I mean, this is a world is big for them, you know? So many things are very difficult for them to handle. And they realize that, oh, if I stop for a moment, I'm actually gonna breathe. I'm gonna stay in my lungs and I'm gonna stay calm. That clip was from our guest of the show today, Paola Borgonovo, founder of Novo Yoga. My name is Katie Berlin. I am the host of the Elevate the Vibe podcast, and here with me is my husband, Jason Berlin. What up, Shug? Happy Sunday. Happy Sunday, indeed. So this episode holds a little bit of a special place in my heart. We are talking about yoga and meditation, and this episode, it's specifically for children, but I am a certified yoga instructor. I was certified through Yoga Works, and I just learned last week that Yoga Works will be closing their locations. I don't know if it's temporary or if it's going to be a long-term decision, but it is a bummer. I haven't been able to practice there in quite some time, obviously because of coronavirus, but uh, I believe that they may be closing their studios for good, which it's just, it's hard. It's, it's an important aspect of my life. I know it's life-changing for many people that have the opportunity to practice, not only at Yoga Works, but just in general, Whenever you have your favorite studio or your favorite teacher, it can be something that you really look forward to. And Katie's being a little modest here. Yoga Works is the cream of the crop of all yoga practices. They have their own dialed in methodology. And she actually did a 200 hour yoga teacher training program and loved it so much that she did a 300 year yoga teacher training. Yes, and- 200 hour, then 300 hour. Not, what did I say? Not 300 year. <laughs> 300 year. That's, I mean, it is a lifelong We learning. have been in quarantine for so long. I have no idea how long we've been here. <laughs> it is a lifelong journey. And we do touch on that in this week's episode. But without further ado, we are going to introduce you to our guest today, Paola. Paola Borgonovo is the founder of Novo Yoga, a yoga studio located in Redondo Beach, California, offering a variety of classes, including yoga for kids. Paola has been teaching yoga to children for over 30 years and has seen firsthand the benefits it provides. Our children are growing up in a world that brings with it pressures across school, competitive sports, technology, and constant connectivity. Having tools to help them focus on their self-health, relaxation, and inner fulfillment, they can navigate life's challenges with a bit more ease, and this is exactly the benefits that children receive from a consistent yoga practice. Let's welcome Paula to the show. All right. Well, Paola, welcome to the Elevate the Vibe podcast. It is wonderful to have you here with us. Thank you for having me. Yes. And we would love for you to introduce yourself to the audience. All right. So I was uh, born and raised in in Milano, Italy, and uh, moved in the States um, in 87 and moved to San Francisco first. uh, And that's really where my journey you know the real journey of yoga began i mean it began a little earlier when i was 10 my mother was doing yoga on her own uh you know with a book and in those days in italy there was nobody really doing yoga so but then when i arrived in uh, in the states you know i saw yoga as i was driving in san francisco so i said i gotta go there <laughs> and that's how the whole journey started and we moved to i say we because i came with my brother and then we moved in uh, Los Angeles in 2003 and then opened the studio in 2004. Yes. So tell the audience a little bit of background on your studio and what you teach, just to give them an idea of Novo Yoga and the difference that you offer. Yes. So uh, the studio had been in the same location for actually 17 years. Uh, same uh, ownership, so me and my brother, but it did evolve through the years. So we started as a Bikram yoga. You're probably familiar with the Bikram series. It's a hot yoga. So in those days, you would only teach one practice, you know, and uh, so it was called Bikram yoga with his name. And then uh, later on, uh, 
before you know the Bikram mess came about, we wanted to anyway introduce other practices because I came from a yenga and my brother came from power yoga. So we wanted to introduce other practices. So it became the high yoga center because it was one room in the heat. So and and then in 2018, we evolved again because we did uh, um, some renovation and we added two rooms. So there's the heated room and non-heated room. So the hot yoga part didn't make any sense. And the word novel basically has two meanings. So one from the Latin roots is new, reborn, rebirth. And novel is also the last four letters of our last name. It's Borgo Novo, so it's Novo, <laughs> it makes sense. Very short. Anybody from any you know, language uh, can say that easily, Novo. Mm -hmm. So that became Novo in, two, in 2018. And we teach, uh, so at first we were teaching our yoga and we are known still you know, in the South Bay for so many years for high yoga. But then once we introduce other practices, we teach also non-heated yoga. We teach uh, um, uh, sequence that are kind of like static, which is similar to the Bikram. So you have a, a, a sequence practice uh, and it's static in the sense that you hold the posture. But then we also teach flow. We also teach sculpt. Sculpt is completely modern practice. I don't know if I would call it yoga. <laughs> and then uh, we also teach yoga for kids and uh, I think what made it also successful is that at the same time parents practice on room one, children practice on room two. So, you know, the parents feel, okay, I got a place for my kids to go and they're doing something good and then I don't have to worry about a babysitter or anything and then I can do my yoga, they do their yoga. So yeah, that's what we do. And then we have a teacher training, which we did last year. So we'll see now with the... <laughs> Whatever is going on, we don't really know, right? Mm -hmm. Anything. So okay, so if someone is unfamiliar with yoga, you mentioned a couple different styles. So you mentioned Bikram, you mentioned Iyengar, you mentioned more of a flow type of yoga, as well as a yoga sculpt. So for someone who's unfamiliar, can you give us a high level difference on some of those different types of practices and? why they're different or how they're beneficial for someone? Absolutely. So let's start from the study practices. Let's say that the study practice, uh, you come into the room and you have a specific sequence that is beautifully uh, put together because you start with the breathing, you end with the breathing. So the lung capacity is very important. And then in between you have posture starting from the standing balancing posture and then moving on to the floor posture. So it's that sequence. The good thing about that, some of the postures are done twice. It depends on the type of class and some other are done one time. The, the beauty about the static practices is for somebody that is new, they're getting familiar with the, with the posture. So some people feel like if I've never done yoga before, I really don't know what to do, even though we guide you ver verbally for them as they come once, twice, three, five times, they start to get an understanding of the sequence and of the posture, then they can start to see their improvement on the posture, so, and things like that. So that is very beneficial in that sense. Um, other practices that we offer are practices like the flow, which is extremely popular. And flow is basically, you keep on moving, it's breath to movement, but you never know what you get on flow. I mean, there are obviously, the sun salutation, there are sequence in a certain way, you know, sun A, sun B, but in between the teacher is very free to evolve within the hour and also depending on the students that the, the teacher has, all right? And uh, so they're very different from each other, but somebody that is new to yoga and they come to a flow class, it's, it's not easy to, okay. So the, they're in down dog, you're in up dog, it's just a, it doesn't flow too well that is like it should flow, you know, at least at the beginning. And then, uh, um, so that is the flow. It's like unknown. You don't know exactly what you get in each and every class. Um, we don't offer a younger because with a younger, you have to have a younger teacher. So at the moment we don't offer a younger, but a younger is basically 
um, a well-respected teacher that passed away actually a few years ago and I had a fortune to meet him. And he, he's the father of the props. So Iyengar uses props, any props, uh, blankets, uh, you know, chairs, um, straps, blocks, all kind of props. And his, his type of yoga is very therapeutic in a way because you're using the help of the props to adjust to the body and to the injuries. And uh, he tends to, he tended to hold the posture for a fairly long time. So it used to be on triangle for like 15 minutes. So you, you really have to, <laughs> you know, work your way through and, you know, and try to stay into the posture. So that's the kind of yoga that it is. This sculpt, I have to say, it's a very, we, I call it modern practice because basically in many ways you're, you're flowing but you're using the weights, which is, you know, you're combining something that has got really nothing to do with yoga. <laughs> so, but it is a modern practice and it is a, a sculpt that is something that is becoming very popular. And I think also because people think of yoga more like a workout than a work in. <laughs> so not that it's bad, but it's not exactly the, the, the traditional yoga, the way yoga was intended to be, you know. Yeah, a lot of people are introduced to yoga in, with the mindset that it's a physical activity that's a workout. And then once they begin to practice, they realize that there are a lot more benefits outside of that. And that's when they're practice begins to deepen and they have a greater understanding yeah. of, of yoga. Mm -hmm. Now with the classes that you mentioned that you offer where there are parents and there are children, can you talk about what the flow could look like for children and how you set that up and work with them and what age ranges that's for and how you keep them engaged during that time with children is very is very different okay so and it's never a set situation like i you know from for example in the studio i teach also yoga in the torrance unified school district so what i do i do after school programs you know um, usually every wednesday starting in my my son's school and then kind of develop to seaside and other schools and everything with, you know, and the student the, in the, the kids in the yoga room are also different. They're outdoor, they're in one way, indoor, they're in another way. It's very different to keep them engaged. Also in the studio, we keep an age, let's say between five and 12, very different, right? In school is elementary. So kindergarten from elementary, you're looking into six uh, to age, maybe um, 10, you know, or something like that, um, you know, 10, 11, something like that. So it's a little bit easier. So the flow, just to get back to the question, is not very easy. So you have to feel the energy of the group and you have to try to keep them in present. And most of the time you have to engage them. So, you know, you'll start with some posture, but if you see that some kids are moving in a different direction, then you have to have a certain flexibility. Not that they run the show, they should not run the show, but you have to have flexibility to understand where the class is going. And that's why dynamic is very different with children versus the, the adults. So to talk about the flow, it depends. Sometimes we flow, maybe you flow for like, three minutes and then you have to stop because if one goes somewhere else and then the other. So super flexible in trying to engage them and keep them in the present moment, which is one of the things that you are trying to do in yoga to just keep them grounded, you know, and feel their body in the physical yoga. They like, uh, they do, believe it or not, they like balancing postures. Mm -hmm. You know, the tree, there's something about the tree pose. That I, that's my favorite pose. I love the tree pose. Yes. Something about the tree, because the tree is powerful, it's grounded, but it's flexible, you mm -hmm. know, with the wind. So they love the tree pose, even if they fall out of the posture, they love the crow pose. 
So any arm balancing near to the ground, they love crow pose is one of the things, you know, they like down dog, but you know, like three pose. So they go from this kind of posture to the others. They like this arm balancing, not so much into plank and things like that. You know, there's, that's a bit too much for them, but they just love three pose and, and things like that. And some of them like candle pose, you know, mm-hmm. which is shoulder stand, cloud pose. So. They, they like different things that they wouldn't do really normally at home. But those, I would say that three bows and crows are some of the favorites. You get some of them doing tripod headstands or is that a little too much for them? You know, in the, in the, in the yoga room, uh, the teacher that we have, because I don't teach the kids yoga in there, but we have a teacher. I teach in the Torrance Unified because I teach the adults at the same time. So I've been teaching the adult for too many years. I cannot leave the adult to go to the kids. And um, that teacher used to uh, put them upside down and they will go against the wall. Yeah. We have a very nice wall with the own sign mm. and they like to go against the wall and just go back. And also our floor, we have a, a floor that is called zebra floor in both room, which is a specific for hot yoga. It's an antimicrobial kind of floor, but it's also a little cushiony. Mm-hmm. So if they kind of fall or anything that it's, uh, it's actually not so bad, you know, it's okay. But they do that. At school, I don't do that. Yeah. So now the school is not, um, they prefer not to, and I totally understand. Also, there is nothing because we do it in the area, you know, in the grass area. So there may be a couple of trees, but it's a little bit more complicated if you do that, even though there is insurance if you do it in the school. Mm. So they'll do that. They like to do that in the, you know, in the yoga room, but they go against the wall. So can you talk a little bit about the, um, the having a, having a kid start, start yoga and maybe, um, some of the differences you see from like a beginning student to like a more an advanced student, you know, as they go through your set of classes and some of the benefits that yoga provides them. And like, have you noticed improved flexibility from them or like just maybe more of a centered nature from kids? Like maybe they start with more of a, you know, a, a bad attitude. And then after they do some classes, they start being a little more kind to, to friends. I don't know. <laughs> No, no, actually, you made a really good point. So, um, well, first of all, I have to tell you, like in anything, consistency, consistency is important, right? So if you're not consistent in anything, you'll take a class here and there, and, you know, you jump in and jump out. You, you never go anywhere. It just, it's always that. And, uh, you know, some kids are inconsistent for several reasons, but the one that are, they are consistent, um, the beauty about yoga, you know, they, they'll really improve. If they have to improve in their flexibility, they will do that. If they have to improve in their strength, they'll do that because yoga, it's really this combination of strength and flexibility, right? So some people think of yoga just a flexibility, but that's not exactly. So again, I'll give you an example. The kids are a little bit older and they come. So like my son's age, they play, you know, they play basketball or baseball. They, they're all really tight, right? And even if they're nine, you know, my son was tight at eight years old as well, you know, they come and they start to do stretches because if they start to improve their flexibility for the sports that they are doing. So squatting down as you play catch, right? My son is a catcher. If you really create more flexibility in your quads and your hamstring, right? In your back, that really helps. So you see that depending where the needs are, they start to to improve just by staying consistent. They show up on the mat. You know, I've seen kids really improving tremendously in certain postures that require flexibility. And as they started, they didn't have it. And this the strength in it is another interesting thing. There are some kids that by nature they're a little bit weaker. It could be a different reason, right? Maybe all kind of reason they start to gain some strength and they get actually physically stronger. And some people will not think that from yoga, but when you do certain posture, you start to become stronger, you know, toning and get stronger. So they have, uh, I have seen in the consistency of children, how they really can improve balance in another thing. And balance, uh, you know, it's not just balancing on one leg, you know, balance require 
concentration mm -hmm. focus. So once you have that focus concentration, that improves so many areas of your life. Because standing on one leg and doing one thing only, that is not normally what children might do, mm -hmm. right? It's, they're, uh, yeah. they're so overwhelmed, you know, honestly being kids in these days is not very easy right it's not like my time i'm older than you guys or your time you know right now there's overstimulation of everything and you see how many more cases of kids that they, they cannot stay focused right and uh just by balancing on one leg and staying on it they start to really recenter themselves and then they can utilize that in school actually Yoga, yoga and meditation can definitely help their performance in school because it brings them more center, more focus, you know. Have, so you slow down. Have you had parents or even any of your students talk about some of the changes that they've experienced when their children or as the child, they've begun to practice a lot more and they say, hey, I actually am able to sit down and concentrate on my homework more easily now than I was before. Yes. Let's, talking about the children, I've actually had moms um, coming to me and telling me that actually, uh, you know, my daughter, she's not having so much of a tantrum and she's not having so much of a meltdown. She's actually learning how to channel a little bit more her emotional or, or emotions. And actually, I have seen her, which was strange, the mom told me, to stop and start to breathe. She closed her eyes, she crossed her leg, and she started to breathe. Because we talk about those things when we are doing yoga, even for that hour at school, because it's not just the physical yoga. So how do you deal with your emotion, you know? When you get mad or do things like that, your breath is the first thing to disappear. So if you're able to get the breath, because the kids go through all kinds of things in school, out of school. I mean, this is a world is big for them, you know? So many things are very difficult for them to handle. And they realize that, oh, if I stop for a moment, I'm actually gonna breathe. I'm gonna spend my lungs and I'm gonna stay calm. So the mom were telling me more than one mom, this kind of, to me, those are the things that I love even more than just saying, hey, my daughter today did the crow so perfect. <laughs> it's more those kind of things yeah. that you say, wow, actually today she didn't have much of a tantrum. She actually, I started to notice how she was controlling in a positive way, all this energy bursting out, just bring it in through the breathing. So yes. And for the adult, absolutely, you see it every, obviously the one that comes three, four times a week, obviously is, is, is different how they have improved from day one to a hundred days later or whatever, you know, years later, because the yoga doesn't really matter. There's no time, you know, you come anytime you want to learn yoga and you just come in and you, and you work on it. It's the work that you want to do. So yes, it's all kind of story, but the one for the children, for the concentration and just getting to deal better with the emotion, you know, it's good. When it comes to a meditation practice, adults have a difficult time with meditation. Are there tactics that you use with children, especially younger children, maybe not teens that have more control over themselves, but younger kids that are wiggly and have a ton of energy, tactics that work for them that you've seen implemented that not only are applicable in the studio, but could be used at home? Yes, there are a um, few things that you can do. For example, counting on the breath, you know, like um, they, it takes a little while because at first when they breathe, they go done, you know, so like a second. So I'm teaching them more to focus on the counting of how many seconds can you inhale and how many seconds can you excel? And then example, if, if we do some counting, at first you notice that there'll, there'll be two seconds and then three seconds and then four seconds. So they're starting to expand. And at that point, they're starting to focus on the expansion of the lungs and the counting that they don't think of something else. Another thing is visualization of the lungs. 
So you visualize the lungs expanding. So I say, okay, as you inhale, just think about the lungs filling up like a balloon. And on the exhale, think about the lungs squeezing the air out. So things like that, visualization or counting are good. Uh, they cannot take it for very long. So they, you know, so sometimes you start for like uh, a minute and then you can see again, check the energy. So, but it's so cute that we started to do these little, little, you know, like two minutes at the end of the class in the, in the Torrance Unified School District. Um, and then after a few times that I was there, at first they were like, you know, you see like one open the eyes and you close the eyes, you know, they do a kind of stuff, you know, and they try to close their eyes, cross the leg, blah, 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 blah. they go like that and they start to <laughs> laugh or anything. But as they were doing it more and more, and then they, they start to enjoy the quiet. And then the funny thing, when I see them the next week, they say, hey, can we do the meditation, you know? Teacher, can we do the meditation today? So you see how they, for little things, you know, they started to understand the benefit of these things. And they love um, also guided meditation. It's more like guided Shavasana. And they love it. I take lavender. So I put lavender in my hands, obviously making sure everybody's good, nobody's allergic. And then I go around and they are just in circle with the eyes closed, lying down. And I have them smell, you know, from a little far, the lavender. And then they, get, they, they start to feel relaxed. And then we just do the guided mm, shavasana from head to toes, you know, like relax your head, your face, you know, things like that. So there are all little different things that, that will work. But the meditation, even in the older kids, is very difficult. Imagine in the adults, you know. I mean, can you see the meditate for five minutes? It's not easy for us either, you know. So things like counting, visualization are good. What I love about the Shavasana aspect and for any listener who's unfamiliar with yoga, if you haven't taken a yoga class, but Shavasana is when you are laying down in the room, you're laying down on a mat and your eyes are closed and, and you're just sort of laying on your back face up. And Paola was mentioning the use of lavender also. And we had Dr. Nikki Knight on our show. That was episode nine. She's an essential oil specialist and she talked a lot about the benefits of different essential oils, but with lavender, it's very calming. It's very therapeutic. And like Paula said, if there's no allergy, I could see how that would be really useful for children because it really sets a tone and a mood for the moment. You're like, okay, in this moment, I have my little routine. And creating routine and consistency is so important for them. And they know like that there's these specific steps that will happen to get myself into that relaxation. I mean, even as adults, we do that. We like that. That's right. You do the yoga, you work the physical, and then you know that there is that part, which is the best part at the end, you know, Shavasana. But Lama is good for babies as well. You know, they, you can use it for babies or you can have a diffuser. It really helps, you know, just stimulates and calm, you know, the nervous system. Now with all of us in quarantine or many people in quarantine and having access to studios or alternative classes or ways to take classes that maybe we haven't had in the past or had to think about, how have you seen parents successfully implement this at home if they're not able to come to a class? Unfortunately, it's very difficult. And even though we have obviously live stream classes like, any, like anybody, and uh, we noticed that in the live stream classes, we started, you know, we had two or three classes a week, and then you will have 10 kids, 15 kids, and then it went down to one or two. They have a very difficult time to interact with you through a TV. I mean, they can sit and watch the computer and play for night. Yes, but <laughs> to have this kind of interaction is very difficult. And it came to a point, I just noticed that, that 
we couldn't really do it live stream. It's very difficult. And so I said to the parents, listen, the, the little that you can do, I understand they cannot be an hour. And they were seeing each other, so it wasn't really bad. But then one starts to play with the doll and the other one starts to do something else. So the teacher and I was, we were noticing these things that they, that is difficult. And, and also their life went upside down, okay, in a matter of a few months. They were going to school and then March 15, they're no longer going to school. They're not interacting with anybody. So they've been going through the change. So all, all I said to the parents, you know, if you could maybe do a couple of things with them, you know, daily, just a couple of postures, stretch them out, just keep them. And then just, uh, is, but for parents, it's difficult. Sometimes it's almost better to have a teacher, right? An outside teacher to teach them. It hasn't been easy. So it's, uh, it's difficult. If you're a parent and you want to begin to have a flow or just a, a yoga session with your child at home, what are some key attributes of, of creating like a successful scenario for a flow for them? Every child is different. There are some children that are morning children, some children that are afternoon. So it really depends on the child itself. So you have to know your child and when together to get your child. So I think all in general, generally the morning are the best. You know, you get up, okay, you have maybe a little breakfast. Okay, let's do some, but you have to kind of minimize it to maybe, I don't know, half an hour or something like that. But depends on every child. So you, you have to kind of know how, where they are, you know, with their personality and, uh, and then just, uh, you know, do maybe just a little round, but you have to also understand when is the time to stop and change it up because this is when you lose the children. So when you keep doing your thing, it's not like the adult, okay? So here's the sequence, we're moving on, we're doing this and you follow, that doesn't work like that with children. So you have to engage them and then as things change up then figure out some other things. Uh, so I can now give you a formula um, depending on your own child. Now, if you have children that are really young, like maybe under elementary school age, so many kids look at their parents and learn by what their parents are doing, not necessarily what their parents are saying. Do you think it's beneficial that if a parent wants to practice yoga, should they roll out their mat and do their yoga and have their meditation while their child is around doing something else just so that they see the Absolutely. parent? like, uh, you know, in the practice, in the flow, even if the child's not participating? Absolutely. You know, I, because I think, because sometimes it looks like they're not interested, but they look, you, you know, later when they, oh, but I saw you doing this, I saw you doing that, because they observe more than what we think. So doing your thing, you know, my son, he saw me basically, you know, since he was a little baby, you know, doing yoga, doing my, my thing. As he came a little bit later in life, he associated that with me work and going away. So he didn't like that very much. But it's, uh, yes, you just do your things and then sometimes you'll find kids that come in. What's a little difficult is for parents that don't necessarily do yoga, don't do meditation. And let's say they're not even that interested. It's very difficult, right? unless you take your child to a yoga teacher or meditation uh, place because you don't have it within you. So if you don't have that will to do it, it's difficult, right? To just, you know, get down and get on the mat to do it. But that would be the best uh, thing to do. You just do your thing and then they follow, you know, sometimes, sometimes not, you know. Is there a certain age that within your experience you see that children begin to really take to it. And it at that age, it's beneficial to put more of a focus on teaching them versus just letting them watch you and lead by example. Well, usually it depends on the kids. For example, you know, I have the kids in elementary school, you know, from first grade to fifth grade, it's a little bit different, right? They have, uh, the, the attention span is a little bit different. But if you start them early, you know, they'll, they'll follow. And then there'll be a time when they're a little bit older in elementary school or going towards uh, middle school where they follow more. But it's, uh, I, I find 
it seems like very difficult for kids to stick to it for a long time. I know very few kids. Uh, and I have, you know, I have some, you know, that they, they've been from first grade, actually kindergarten, and now they're in fifth grade and they've been coming to yoga. But then as they go to middle school, eh, it's not cool anymore. They start to get a little bit, have a different interest, right? So now they're interested in something else. So they, but, you know, I will say that, you know, elementary school, it's a pretty good time. But if you start even early, there's some kids, you know, again, their personality, they'll, they'll follow you. They start to do stuff, things with you. Uh, yoga with you, so yeah I could imagine that even if you're implementing something along these lines in your own home like even if you have a practice or if you sit and meditate and your child's watching you even if they're not participating now there could be a point later in their life where a- as an adult or a young adult they become interested again and circle back to it it's like you were sharing like your mom was actively doing yoga and you saw her you know even from a young age and then as you moved San Francisco to LA now you have a studio you know you and your brother started this studio together so there are benefits that could long outweigh just the short term so I would think that parents shouldn't be discouraged if in the immediate, they don't really see something happening, but long-term, it's a very beneficial habit to have and a tool in your toolbox. That's very, that's very true. And that's what I'm hoping for my son because he was doing yoga with me, let's say until fifth grade. And then after that, he went into middle school. He wasn't that interesting. And I think though that when he's in college or even further later, he will think about this and also including the good eating habits you know yes they do you're right you're totally right you know so it is worth you know to just do it and even if they go through their phases at least this is there okay you know my mom does meditation she does she works on the breathing and then they find themselves in their 20 where they actually need to channel better their emotions and use the little techniques, you know. Yep. Now we're living in a time where having access to studios or being able to head into a gym for a, a yoga class, we really don't know what that's going to look like long term. And of course, there are classes that are being offered by studios online. But if you're a parent and this is something that you're interested in for your children in the future, are there specific credentials that you would recommend someone looks for with the studio that is catering to children or teaches children? Yeah, yes. Well, I will definitely um, look for it. Are you talking about credential of the teachers? Um, yes. yeah, absolutely. Um, not everybody can teach yoga just like that. You know, you have to study. You know, I mean, myself, I've been practicing yoga for 30 years and teaching for over 20, and I'm still studying. You know what I mean? I'm still doing teacher training. So you do want to have, I had like, uh, I think uh, it's uh, five teach, different teacher training of kids. So you, de- you do want to deal with teachers that are certified and that they have been learning from the right sources. All right, because when it comes to the physical body and when it comes to kids, you have to know what to do, you know. So, yes, definitely certified teacher, you know, go to somebody that knows what they're doing and they, you know, and they, they watch kids so they don't hurt themselves, you know. That's why certain posture, you have to be careful how you get the, the kids into it. You can't just put kids upside down, you know, you don't really know you know, their history, you don't know what's going on with them. So you want, you want to have somebody that knows. Are there specific certifications that a teacher could receive that are aligned or just specific for children? And what are those? There are teacher training for children, but they are very short. So to me, a, a yoga teacher that, uh, that is, uh, is only done kids yoga teacher training should actually do adult teacher training so they can learn more about anatomy. 
because anatomy is very important and the anatomy is the anatomy. So whether you're a child or, a, or an adult, obviously. Um, so I really recommend to anybody that teach yoga to kids that they do something, some other training or they learn more, you know, about anatomy, but learn also about the psychological aspect of, uh, of uh, meditation and, you know, things like that. So, yeah, you have, I think you have to have knowledge um, on the physical aspect and even taking meditation courses because uh, that works also. I do know some yoga teacher that they've also done, you know, they were teachers in school, so they have studied in different ways, but they have studied also children's psychology. So that's very good, you know, so knowing a little bit about the children behavior and everything. If you could leave the audience with a key takeaway, what would you want to share with them? Consistency. So that's one of the thing that I will say, just be consistent. So whatever you, you know, you teach to your children, stay, stay consistent. No, don't deviate right and left, you know. And it's the same thing for yoga. So if you want your kids to get the benefit of yoga, and meditation, then be consistent, um, you know, helping them, you know, to get through that. Um, and uh, it, it's uh, in a world like this, that, that, you know, like I said before, there is so much out there, you know, and uh, there is so many distraction. It seems like I, I see also parents, you know, wanting to, their kids to, try 10 different sports, you know, I understand, <laughs> I understand where they're trying to go, but when you want to try everything, you know, it's like, so where's the, you know, where's the focus? So I think that's what becomes a little bit uh, hard because it's about doing one thing at a time and putting the focus on that. All right, you're doing that, stay consistent on that, do and try that for a while, you know, instead of just moving. It seems like, this kind of like the more the merrier, you know, the more things you learn, there's more sports than the more things. And, uh, you know, going to drive the kids to 30 different activity in a week, like a taxi driver. So it's uh, just stay consistent on some things and, you know, and, and then, uh, you know, then they see your consistency, you know, and then they might adopt that as they get, um, older but there's many other things you know but this is one that comes to mind you know inconsistency so i will say consistency and knowing that different children at different ages have different priorities with the consistency in mind is there a certain amount of classes or days or weeks or months that you would recommend that parents at least try to implement this for children before just sort of like throwing in the towel if the kid's really not into it that you would say like okay if you try this for two months and they're not into it like let it go yeah so well first of all the, let's see the weekly consistency you know um once is better than nothing so i always say this okay so if you can do it twice or three times but it's very difficult because kids have many activities. No, I gotta go to ballet at 5 p.m. But then I gotta go to soccer. Then I gotta go, you know, they have so many zillions of activity. So at least uh, try for six months consistent. Because, you know, sometime a month or two uh, can be okay. And that's not easy to try for six months. But you, 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 if you keep them, if of course they like it, okay? Because if they don't like it at all and they, and they reject it, you can't get through that. But at least uh, try, you know, six months to get them to see the benefit of certain things. If they, if they are willing to, you know. Otherwise, two months is fine too. Say better than nothing, you know, but I think uh, it's good six months it would be a nice, uh, nice way to get more benefit and stay with that. Are there any resources that you would want to recommend for the audience? It can be books, YouTube channel, podcast, anything there that you would like to recommend. Plenty of, uh, of information. 
Um, you know, one of the things that, that for me um, is uh, having conversation with other parents is very, I find it very helpful. And there is always somebody that says, hey, I try, I saw this and I saw that. There are many, many things uh, available, you know, on YouTube, but there's many, you know, many, many options, you know. And um, so I don't, I wouldn't say a specific um uh, specific one, but there's tons of books on uh, on yoga and and also YouTube channels um, available. Way probably too many. <laughs> Do you have a favorite book if somebody's just getting into yoga that you would recommend? Well, there was a there is there is different books. Uh, there was a book, um, you know, Byron Baptist. Um, which uh, is from Power Yoga. They made a version for little kids. That's a nice, a nice book. And uh, it's the kid and, and a parent, you know. So that's a nice book with different uh, postures and things like that. I forgot the name of it, but it's from Byron Baptist, uh, Power Yoga. So that's a good book. There are many, many books. But... Awesome. That awesome. sounds great. All right, and where can everyone find Novo Yoga? What's your website, your social media handles? If someone wants to practice with you, where can they find you? So we are located in uh, Redondo Beach, actually, on Pacific Coast Highway. And uh, it's, um, the website is www.novoyoga.com. And through the website, then you have access to the email and everything. But it's in uh, Redondo Beach, uh, between Prospect and Palos Verdes Boulevard. Um, so we've been there 17 years. <laughs> May was the 17th anniversary. Uh, yeah, hopefully we'll stay there longer, you know. We'll see, you know. It's we'll beautiful right happens. there. And if, there. if students want to practice with you online, how can they implement yeah. that? So they go through mind body, mind body, uh, everybody, everybody. Many people use mind body online, which is the website, not the website, but it's the software for yoga. So when you go into mind body, if you search novo yoga, N O V O uh, yoga, then it pops up and then you enter and then you have the schedule. Or through the website, when you go to the website and you look for schedule, and you open it up and it has, obviously right now we only have live stream and we did something outdoors starting today. And um, so you will see once a week, uh, yoga outdoor, we change location depends, but they'll find us there and it can just go through my body and, and you know, register there. And then give yourself a shout out for Instagram and Facebook. Where can someone find you? Novo Yoga in Instagram and Facebook. That's it. We, those are the only two, let's say, um, social media that we use, but it's just called Novo Yoga. Awesome. All right. Well, Paola, thank you for joining us. It was great to have you on and for you to share your knowledge about little ones in the studio and yoga and meditation and the benefits that they can see from this practice. As adults, we know the benefits, mm -hmm. but it's cool to hear about the children as well. Yeah, and if there's one thing that I could add, it's uh, teach them how to breathe. All right, this is something that the adult, uh, you know, I was thinking back of the question that you asked, uh, you know, there was one question that you asked before. So if there's anything they could try to do is to help them to teach them how to breathe, really, because uh, their lung capacity, you know, um, can develop more and more. The breath is the center of everything. The breath is also the one that helps you to stay more center when the emotions start to go all over the place. So just by simply breathing, actually, you can achieve many other things, all right, including sports. So it's so broad that, you know, from breathing, you can clear your mind and just make better decision, you know, or at least not rush decision but you can also learn how to use your breath from when you have to run, you know, and things like that. So, yeah. Right on. Yeah, great tip. I mean, it's the essence of life. If we didn't have oxygen, I mean, we wouldn't be here for another mm -hmm. three minutes. That's so, right. <laughs> yeah. Don't we underestimate that? It's mm -hmm. unbelievable. 
because yeah. you know people forget to breathe all the time even just by practicing yoga and that's why it's almost like a mantra whenever we teach the word breathe breathe is like find your breath breathe it's like constant you know so that it can really get in their body in their brain cell and everywhere to just to kind of remind you that it's the present moment yesterday is basically gone and tomorrow we don't know so this is it breath is what you have right now so that's one thing that maybe would be nice for people to parents to teach their kids and teach themselves too you know I, right? true yeah i need that lesson yeah right here too <laughs> when we have this thing like sometimes we just uh, we are like uh we get all excited and someone we realize we are not even breathing properly and then or we talk and we should just zip it for a moment and just see even in a relationship like just okay and then zip I'm, it i'm still figuring out that one right there yeah <laughs> <laughs> we all do <laughs> yeah cool all right. Well, thank you for being on the podcast. Thanks for helping us to elevate the vibe. Thank you very much for having me and uh, best wish you with the babies. Ah, thank, well, thank you. you. Thank you so much. We appreciate well, it. To breathe. <laughs> yes. Yeah, right. All right. <laughs> Bye. Hey there, Vibe Hive babes. If this podcast has brought you any value, please rate and review on your favorite listening platform. And if you're feeling really generous, share with a friend. Visit us at elevatethevibe.co for show notes on this episode and previous episodes. This podcast is intended to educate, entertain, and inspire. It is not intended to diagnose, treat, or substitute for professional medical advice. Please consult your healthcare provider with any questions you may have. And as always, thank you for joining us to Elevate the Vibe.